Today, I'm gonna to show you a complete beginner's guide of the HP Chromebook laptop. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features, allowing you to leave this video as an HP Chromebook laptop expert. So let's get started with today's video on the HP Chromebook laptop. So you can see it comes in a box like this. It has the Chromebook logo and the HP logo. And then on the sides here, we've got some specs. It lets us know a little bit about the laptop itself. It's powered by Intel, the RAM, um, the PC, the Chrome operating system, the 14 inch display, and the gray color. Um, and then on the other end, there are some additional specs, barcodes, serial numbers, and data for us. And then on the other side of the box, it's got the battery symbol for shipping, and then of course the Intel inside. And then we can open up the box here and see that it comes protected. And we can pull it out just like that. And we're presented with the laptop right here. We've got one more additional component in the box that we can pull out. We can pull this out and this looks to be the charger. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the box to the side and take out the charger here. Let's see if I can just go ahead and pull that out. And just like that, that's all that's in that box right here is the charger. And it has this plastic covering over it. We can slide the plastic covering away from the device. And all you have to do is just plug up your charger like this. You put the two in together like that and you are good to go. Um, so you can see that you can plug this end into the wall and you plug this end right here into the computer. So it has this Velcro, Velcro strap can undo it just like this and we're good to go we can plug this end into the computer so that's the charger we can take off the little flap right here of the styrofoam cardboard that it's in and the laptop is presented to us just like this we can pick it up and then we can dispose of the container that it was in it's in this plastic um, so it's kind of nicely tacked together with some tape. We can undo the tape and take out the laptop just like this. And there we go. We've got the Chromebook, the HP Chromebook laptop. It came with some setup instructions. It wants us to charge it, then press the power button. It tells us where everything is. We'll go over all the specs and the ports on the side. And then we just follow the on-screen instructions to get started and we can install the HP support system if needed. So we can open this up. It has some more tutorials for us for gestures on the touch screen or touch pad and more opportunities for us to review the legal paperwork. So some warnings and stuff. So let's go ahead and take a tour of this laptop. On the front here, we've got this nice material here. It's got the HP logo and it's got the Chromebook. If we flip it around, this is what it looks like for you. Um, and when you open the laptop, what other people will see. On the side here, we've got a headphone jack, a USB-A port, and then a USB-C port. And then this charges through USB-C too, so you can plug it up to charge right there. And then on the other end, you've got a Kingston security lock, an HDMI port, and another USB-A port. So plenty of input and output on this laptop. Um, let's go ahead and lift it up and see what's inside here. So we just lift it up just like that. We're presented with this nice little covering material that covers the keyboard. And this is what it looks like. Um, so you've got this HP Chromebook sticker, get things done with the apps that you love, the Intel sticker. You've got a trackpad right here where you can do gestures, you can click, and then you've got a keyboard, full-size keyboard ready for us right there. And then if we angle the camera up, you can see that you've got a screen. Um, you've got a 14 inch screen here. You've even got a webcam built right into it. If we angle it down, you can see the webcam right there, uh, which you can get access to if you're doing your Zoom calls or your Google Meets calls or you know, connecting and chatting with friends. Um, so a really cool um, piece of hardware that we have right here. Let's just go ahead and press the power button and see what it's like to boot on for the first time. Um, and by default, it looks like we will need to plug it up in order to get some power here. So um, the power cable is right here. We'll go ahead and plug this up into the side of the computer right here. So we'll plug it up right there. 
Now, I'll demonstrate that one more time so you can see the power connection is right here on the side. You take the power cable and you plug it up right there. And then you'll take the other end and plug it up into the wall. So I'm gonna loop this behind the laptop here. And then I'm gonna undo the power connection here. Um, so this way we'll be able to get some power and boot it up and go through the onboarding process for the setup. So I'm gonna go over here and plug this up into my power outlet and we are good to go. I've successfully plugged up the computer and um, we can go ahead and hold down this power button and get it powered on and see what else we need to do in order to set up this computer successfully. So there we go, we've got it. The Chrome logo pops up. It's a nice animation there. Um, and I'm gonna lift this up some more so you can see everything. All right, so welcome to Chromebook. It's fast, secure, and effortless. It has the English language for us. And it looks like um, it just went to sleep on us. Check out today's sponsor, Rakuten, where you can get a $30 bonus today when you sign up using the link in the description, appfind.org slash Rakuten. You can shop at your favorite stores with over 3,500 stores to check out, and you install the plugin, create an account on Rakuten, and earn cash back today. It's really cool that you can come here and get paid to shop, and of course you can earn your $30 bonus today using the link in the description. This helps out the AppFind channel a lot, so check out today's sponsor, Rakuten, using the link appfind.org slash Rakuten. So let's see what happened there. Um, we can go ahead and, there we go, it restarted. So Chrome logo one more time, maybe it did a quick update for us. Um, so welcome to Chromebook, fast, secure, and effortless. We've got our language right here in accessibility options. So if you want to change your language, you just use the trackpad. You see the mouse moving around. And here's the trackpad right here. So you just move you, your finger right along the trackpad and it moves the mouse. Um, and we can go ahead and select whatever we want. So if we want to change the language, we just move our finger and we select English and we click on it and we can change our language to whatever we want. Um, they've got various different languages here. I wanna stick with English. You can also change your keyboard if you have another keyboard preference, and then you press okay, just like that. So we've got our language set up. If you want accessibility options, you can press that and turn on your various different accessibility options. They've got spoken feedback, a large mouse cursor, a high contrast mode, screen magnifier, select to speak, docked magnifier, and on-screen keyboard. So I, I'm not gonna turn on any of these features, but if you need them in order to set up the computer or to use the computer successfully, it's good to know that these accessibility options are built in right into the setup process. So you can easily customize this device to fit your needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the OK option right here, and we'll move forward and see what else we have on the Chromebook. So we'll go ahead and just hit the Get Started button in the lower left right here. You can see also it has the time, it has the battery, um, the keyboard that we're in, and also it shows us that we're not on Wi-Fi. We can click on this, and this shows us our control panel right here, where we can see that we're not connected to any Wi-Fi networks. We've got Bluetooth turned on, accessibility is not on, the keyboard set for US. You can see our volume controls, and then you can see the screen brightness. It shows the date um, and the percentage until it will get full, so the battery percentage and that is charging. And then over here in the lower left, you have a shutdown option. If you don't want to go through with the setup process, you can shut it down or you can close the laptop. But we're going to go ahead and move forward with the setup process and get started. So I'm going to press this get started button. And the first thing it wants us to do is to connect to the network. So it wants us to connect to the Wi-Fi network to restore data, connect to the internet. So all we have to do is just select our Wi-Fi network and then type in our Wi-Fi password. So I'll go ahead and do this like that and we will go ahead and connect. So it says allow other users on this device to use this network that is currently turned on. Um, and we'll go ahead and connect. So it connects to our Wi-Fi network like this. It's showing a little connection progress bar. So it's got connecting um, dots. And then next up, it wants us to review the Google Terms of Service. So you'll need to agree to these terms and service in order to use Chrome OS. Chrome OS is the operating system that powers the Chromebook and allows you to use Google services and have fast, secure, 
um, you know, software. So really good piece of uh, technology that's out. We'll go ahead and say um, there's an optional help and improve promo S feature right here. That's automatically checked, but we can turn this off if we don't want it on. You can scroll down and review all of the different terms and services right here. It's a lengthy list right here of what um, you do agree to. And then they've got additional terms right here. So system security settings and more with these blue blueprints right here. But all you have to do is just review the terms of service and then there's a blue accept and continue button. And I'm gonna see if I can bring this in some more so you can get a better view of it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept and continue. And now it's checking for updates. So determining device configuration, and then it's asking you, or it's asking us and you with you setting up this product, um, who is using this Chromebook? And the two options are you, you can set it up as a device for work or personal use, or you can set it up for a child um, with a digital ground rules and it helps them play, explore, and do school and work at home. Today's video is sponsored by a children's book titled Enough, A Best Self Adventure. You can purchase this book using the Amazon link in the comments and description below. This is perfect if you have kids or if you have family members and you want them to live their happiest childhood, you can check out Enough, A Best Self Adventure using the Amazon link in the description below. You can see the incredible illustrations alongside of the text here. So you can go ahead and check out this book titled Enough, A Best Self Adventure perfect for young children in the description below and purchase your very own copy today. So you can always add more people after the setup. Each person can personalize their account and keep data private. I'm going to go ahead and set this up for me, but if I was to set up for my kid or um, a child, I could go ahead and select a child like that using the drop down or the trackpad. I just move the mouse over to this option and you see the check mark moves over to the right. But I'm going to go ahead and move my mouse and click. Just press the trackpad firmly right there and it moves the check mark back up to you because I'm setting this up for me. So we'll go ahead and hit the next button. You can see that there are multiple options right here in the bottom. We can go ahead and browse as a guest or we can set up enterprise enrollment. So these are options if you were to set up through a work device or if you don't want to set up using your Google. And um, that's an, another feature I may show in a second where we can just browse as a guest and we don't even need a Google account. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. And now it wants us to sign in to your Chromebook. So if you have a Google account, this is great because all of your Google services sync with the Chromebook. You get things like your Gmail, your Google Docs, your Google Sheets, your Google uh, everything, YouTube. When you log in with Google on a Chromebook, everything is in a perfect universe where they all talk to each other and you can use the services um, and it's a perfect internet cloud computer. But if you do not want to log in with Google, there is an option right here that says browse as guests and you can just browse as a guest and you're no longer required to have a, an account in order to use the Chromebook. So in order to use the Chromebook, you do need a Google account where you can get at google.com or gmail.com. You set up an account or you can just log in with one that you already have. Um, and then you can see that there are more options right here. You can create an account right here on the Chromebook. So I just clicked more options in the blue text where it says create account or enterprise account. And I'm going to go ahead and demo the browse as a guest feature for us right quick. So I'm just going to click browse as a guest. It's right here in the corner and it just opens up the web browser, the Chrome web browser. I'm browsing as a guest. So now I can use this Google Chromebook without ever needing an account and I'm good to go and I'm browsing as a guest. So I can go, I can head over to google.com and we can you know, search for anything that we need. We can press the I'm feeling lucky button and we can see what pops up. Google's art, Google art and culture. So I'm using this Chromebook for the very first time as a guest and it immediately opens up the Chrome internet browser. So let me give you a tour. Right here at the very bottom is where you have your Chrome and all your applications. So you can see that Google Chrome is currently open up. There's a little line underneath it. And as I hover the mouse over it, it shows Google Chrome. I can go ahead and minimize my applications. Right now, the Google Chrome application is full screen. And in the top right, there are three options, the minimize button, the um, restore button, and then the close button. 
I want to go ahead and minimize this into the lower taskbar right here with all the apps. So I just press the minus um, or the one that looks like a line and it minimizes this all the way down. So now I've got my Google Art and Culture minimized right here in the Google Chromebook. So next up, if I want to, this is my desktop for the guest account. There also is a files option. I can open up that application by going to it and just clicking on it. So I move the mouse over to it and then I press the trackpad once and it opens up the files application for the guest user. Now this window shows you all the files that are on this guest account. So I can see anything that I download will show up right here in the downloads folder. I can double click on that and see that they're in my files and download. And I can use the computer if I wanted to download an image, for example. Say we go back to the Google Chrome app. I just click it with the Chrome icon right here one time and it brings it right back up in full screen. Say I want to download this image or I want to download an image on Google, um, Google Images. Say if I scroll down here, let's see, are there any images down here? They're not. Um, so let's go ahead to the Google Images section. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to say art. I'm going to type in art and press enter. It's going to search for it. And then I'm going to go to images. And now we can do the starry night image, a very popular image that we have right here. Um, and then I'm going to see if we can save this to our, our drive here. Um, so it keeps opening up. It wants us to... So here I'm dragging it. I'm gonna press this middle button, the two windows to restore it. And then I'm gonna bring up the files and see if I go into downloads and I wanna drag this file in here, if it will let me um, drag it. So I'm gonna drag the windows to the side here. It's gonna snap them to the grid just like that. And then I'll snap this one to the grid and then I'll drag, okay. oops, it's opening up one more time. Let's drag this right over there. Um, so it looks like you will need to right click on it in order to successfully download it. And you can see I keep opening up various different tabs. So with the Chrome, you right click with two fingers. So I'm going to bring up the trackpad so you can see that. All you have to do is just take two fingers and you press and it right clicks. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save Image As. And then we'll go to our downloads folder. We'll say um, Art. And then we'll press the save button by clicking on it and you can see art shows up right there in the downloads folder and now i can double click on it and i have this art photo right here on the chromebook itself so really cool options that we have with the chromebook so that's how you download something on your chromebook it goes to your downloads folder you can download multiple things and a really cool feature that comes you know with the file storage management and this gets even better when you sign in with your Google account and you use something like Google Drive to seamlessly sync all of your files, your photos, everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the Files app and I'm going to exit out of the window that we have here with the, um, with the art that we searched for. So let's take one more overview of the lower section right here. In this lower section on the left, we have the launcher where you can launch all of your apps. I'm going to click on it and you can see you've got files, Chrome, camera, settings, and explore. So I'm going to go ahead up here, press the arrow up, and you can see all of those applications that we can possibly use. So far, we've successfully opened Chrome. We found art in Chrome. We've downloaded art to the file section. Next up is camera, settings, explore, and wallpaper. And you can change your wallpaper. You can open up the camera, or you can go into the deeper settings of the Chromebook. Let's take a look at the camera. So we press the camera. We know we have a webcam right here and we open it up and it lets us know that photos and videos have a new home under my files camera. And you can see here, I'm talking, I'm speaking and it's got the camera recording and you can see that right here on screen as I record this video. So really cool. We can just take a photo right here. They've got the capture button. I can smile, please. It takes the photo and it saves it right here in the camera. Now this camera is also great for things like Google Meet or Google um, you know, chat when you're video chatting with people or if you're in a Zoom call, you can use this webcam to, to manage that camera. So you can come over here, you can record a video if you want, or you can record a square. So they've got multiple options right here at the very bottom, the capture button right here, your previous photos, and then all the camera settings on the left. So really cool options. And then of course we reviewed at the very beginning that you can close things, 
You can restore them, change the size of them, or you can minimize them down to the taskbar. So we'll go ahead and close it. So let's take a look at some other features that we have right here in the guest account. So I've gone ahead and I've opened the launcher by clicking on the circle in the lower left. Now I've got this Google search. I can search for applications or I can search things for the web or even device settings. We're going to take a look at the settings application. So I click on it and I'm going to think maybe we can search for something regarding the battery. And it even pops up. All you have to do is just type in what you think, and it will show you things that are relevant in the settings application, such as this feature right here that's idle power on battery. And I can just go ahead and I can click on it, and it opens up the settings application. And not only does it open the settings application, but then it tells me exactly where the features are regarding to idle on battery is located, where I can see it's under device, right here under when idle, while on battery, it should sleep. So really cool features that you can do with the launcher. All you have to do is just click it and then you can type in whatever setting that you want to find um, or whatever app that you want and it will immediately open it and then allow you to modify that setting or open that application. And if it doesn't have either of those matches, it'll allow you to find it on the web. It'll do a quick Google search for it and open it up in the Chrome browser. So if we're looking for when the Warriors next game is that's not a setting or an application but it has a little web search right here and we can go ahead and just click this and it lets us know when the google uh, sign in option is right here we'll go ahead and say we're signed out but it lets us know the next game is at 7 p.m today so really cool that you can use the launcher to do quick Google searches. You can use it to find options and settings. You can use it to find applications. The launcher is probably the best feature on the Chromebook because it allows you to instantly open up whatever you need really fast. And all you have to do is just press it. You just click the button in the lower left like this, and it opens up the launcher and all your applications are right here. So let's go ahead and dive deeper into the settings. First, we can start off with network. So for network, we are connected to Wi-Fi, and we've got Bluetooth enabled if we want to connect a Bluetooth mouse or headphones or keyboards. Um, you can see more settings on the touchpad, the keyboard, the displays, the storage management, power, the search engine, and security and privacy, along with applications. Next up in this major settings option right here is Bluetooth. So this takes us down to all of our Bluetooth settings um, and it kind of categorizes everything I just went through. Bluetooth, device, search engine, secure, security and privacy, and then settings for applications that we manage. They even have an advanced category right over here that says advanced, where we can drop it down and see all of the advanced features such as date and time. So we can modify what clock system we're on. We can use 24 hour clock and more. We've got language and inputs just right here. We can click on that and see what languages we're using. We can modify print and scan. So if you have various different print jobs or printers, we can modify that. And then we've also got the accessibility option right over here where you can turn on accessibility. Say you didn't want to turn it on during the setup process, but now you want to, you can come into the settings, come to advanced and turn on accessibility and instantly load up your options right there. So really cool options that we have. And then you've got the About Chrome OS where it lets us know what's new and uh, we can get help, report an issue, receive diagnostics and more. Let's go ahead and click on see what's new and see what the latest update is. So the latest update is better video calling. With the Google Meet app, you get improved performance and easy to access, easy to access features like video backgrounds that make meetings more inclusive and fun. So Google Meet is now a pre-installed uh, application on the Chromebooks and it's easy to search for by pressing the everything button. So the everything button is very similar to the, the Chrome um, launcher that we explored over here. If you notice at the very top of your keyboard, if I bring the keyboard into focus, you do have buttons that are right up here. Um, so for our feature here, we don't have an everything button. Um, we just have a back button that we can go back and forward, an escape button to get out of things, a refresh button to refresh. We've got this window selection um, button where it shows us all of our various different windows that we have open. So we've got the Warriors game window in the Chrome um, app. We've got the settings application open, and then we've got this Explorer app open, seeing what's new. And I just press this button once to get access to um, all of these apps that are open, a bird's eye view just like that. They've even got a plus button at the very top right here. We want to add a, multiple desks. We can do that. You just add another desk. You, you can name it. Um, we'll call it two. And now we've got 
a clean desk right here. And then to get back to the other desk, you just press this button right here one more time and you can go back to desk one. So you can separate your windows just like that and have them super clean, really efficient to work out with various apps on multiple desks and have a clean workflow. We got volume controls. So if I bring the keyboard back into focus, these are not volume controls. These are brightness controls. Volume controls are at the end, which we'll get to in a second. So you can lower the brightness of the uh, display with these buttons right here. So it goes up and down um, just like that. And then you got volume controls right next to that. So brightness controls are up first, and then you got volume controls. You can mute the volume. Um, you can bring it up and down just like that. So they've got various different um, volume controls that we can access. And then on the far right, you've got the power button. If we want to take this, turn it off or um, go to sleep, you just hold down the power button there. So you can also just close the laptop to put it to sleep too. And that's a great way to get some... Um, some sleep in if the if you don't want to actually go through the setup menu or you can lift it up and then in the lower right here if you bring the mouse down so i'm going to bring this closer to you so you can see in the lower right where your control panel is you can click on it and you can also get majority of your other settings there such as the power button if you want to bring this to sleep or you want to turn it off you can just press it just like that and it shuts the computer down completely and we are good to go so if you want to boot it up back up, all you have to do is just hold down the power button and it will turn on the Chromebook again and we'll be good to go. We can set it up as a new user using a Google account or we can go ahead and log in and continue as a guest again. So if you never set it up as a Google user, it will kind of always take you through the setup process and you'll always have to. Um, so you can go ahead and create a Google account and you get more features like Google Drive and all of your Google services synced directly to the Chromebook. But for our use case, we're going to continue as a guest um, and continue using all the guest features just like that. So we're browsing back as a guest. One thing to keep in mind though is when you are using it as a guest, it does not save anything. So it doesn't remember what windows we're in. You're gonna to have to sign up as a Google user in order for that to happen. If we go back to our files, we can see the art that we downloaded is no longer there because it does not save anything on the guest profile. So you will need to make a Google account if you want it to save your downloads, if you want it to save your web history and all of your products. Um, when you're using a guest account on the Google, Chromebook, it does not work. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in privately on my um, Google account, just so I can give you a quick demo of what that looks like when you sync your other Google services. And then um, I'll be right back. All right, we are back. I've successfully signed into this Chromebook with one of my personal Google accounts. And now it wants to know, can it sync your Chromebook? So when you sync your Chromebook, all of your Google data typically syncs together. So all of your Chromebook apps, all of your settings, your bookmarks, your passwords, your histories, all of that data instantly saves to the account. So you can review sync options following set the setup if you want to, um, you know, see which bookmarks are synced or which passwords are synced, that kind of thing. Let's actually click that and we'll review it following setup. But you, when you do sign in, you have to accept and continue and understand that when you log in with your Google account on a Chromebook, everything you have in your Google account basically shows up on the Chromebook. Um, so really good information to know. We'll go ahead and click and click accept and continue and it takes us immediately to the desktop and opens up the sync settings because we wanted to review those quickly. So you can see that you can get to these under you and Google when you open up the settings application on the Google Chrome app and you can manage what you sync. Um, so you can just press manage what you sync and right now it says sync everything, it syncs the apps, it syncs bookmarks, it syncs extensions, history, settings, theme and wallpaper, reading list, open tabs, passwords, addresses and more payment methods using Google Pay and Wi-Fi networks. So right now that's what's syncing in the Fun facts, now that we have logged in through a Google account, we can go ahead and see all of the Google apps and services. So if we go ahead and press this launcher and we press this arrow up, you can see that we have a few more applications right here available for us to use. Something like the Play Store to install applications, something like Gmail to read our email, Google Docs to write documents, Google Slides to make presentations, 
Google Sheets to do you know Excel type work, Google Drive to manage all of your various files on the cloud. When you do something on the Chromebook and you're logged in with a Google account, things do save, things do reappear when you shut down and reopen your computer. So that's good to know they've got Google Keep for note taking. They've even got YouTube, one of our favorite applications that you're watching this on, where you can go click and watch other people's content. So this is the Chromebook and what it looks like when you are logged in. So really cool options that they have right here. And I think that it's a really cool piece of technology, the way that it syncs everything together and that we're good to go. You can see a few more apps right here that we just reviewed are in our lower section taskbar at the very bottom. And then we still have options right here that we can click on to review in, in the settings for our um, Chromebook. You can see we got a notification that Google Play Protect is turned on to keep us secure and we're good to go there. So this is what it looks like to use a Chromebook. The most popular app probably used is the Chrome internet browser. You can click on that and open it and you're good to go with your YouTube searches and your Google searches and your internet browsing. You can save things to the files app and then you can use the launcher right here in the lower left to open up various different applications. You can do search queries or more. Want to promote your business in front of tech enthusiasts? You can sponsor AppFind to get a shout out on a video or even your own dedicated video. To learn more, see our rate card and request a sponsorship. You can click our link in the description to Passion Fruit to learn more and inquire about a sponsorship. So this has been a complete beginner's guide of the Chromebook, the HP Chromebook laptop. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and let us know what your favorite HP Chromebook laptop feature is in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to figure out when we release our next technology video. We love producing these for you and we can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.